Hi everyone, how are you today? I am really excited for today's topic and what I want to tell you about today because you probably haven't heard of this. I know I sure had never heard of copper and what can happen when you become copper toxic. But this could be causing your sleep issues. At least half my clients have copper toxicity and it's totally affecting their sleep. This was a big one for me too. So I have personal experience with this as well. So if you have ever taken birth control, had an IUD or taken hormone replacement therapy, if you have ever been a vegan or vegetarian, if you have ever drank out of copper pipes, which if you live in an older home, you're drinking out of copper pipes, and if you swim often in chlorinated water, you could have too much copper in your body, and that is why one of the reasons why you can't sleep. Now, copper is a necessary mineral, but it can easily become unbound and unstable and cause neurological symptoms. And that's because it accumulates in the brain and so can contribute to some of the symptoms I'll tell you about in a bit, and it accumulates in the liver. So it's going to affect liver function. Now I look for copper toxicity in the hair tissue mineral analysis test that I have all of my clients do. And sometimes copper is obviously high, but most of the time it actually looks like deficiency. It looks low and the toxicity is actually hidden. So I look at 11 different markers to find out what's going on with copper. Now excess copper contributes to mineral imbalances in many ways. And these mineral imbalances also lead to sleep issues. So first of all, this copper will deplete potassium. It will raise sodium and then deplete it over time. It increases how fast you burn through magnesium by five times. So you could be taking magnesium supplements and your body's just burning through it. It's not enough. And then it also pushes calcium into the soft tissue, like the hair and the arteries, which is how we test it in the hair, instead of calcium going into the bones and teeth where it's supposed to go. Now, copper toxicity can lead to full adrenal burnout. So it does this because it raises sodium at first, that gives you a lot of energy. So then you take on more tasks and start to burn the candle at both ends. And that elevated sodium also intensifies your stress response. So that's going to lead to magnesium and zinc loss, and it's gonna make you feel anxious, snappy, and irritable. So let's talk about the symptoms of copper toxicity. So of course, sleep problems and insomnia is a big one. There's also fatigue, exhaustion, and burnout, anxiety, irritability, even panic attacks, ruminating negative thoughts, obsessive compulsive disorder, and that racing mind. But it can also manifest as anemia, as hypothyroid symptoms, as brain fog, as depression, as hypothyroid symptoms, as brain fog, as depression, really so many things. The list is very long. And I'll be sharing my blog post with you about this so you can see all of those symptoms. Now, it's interesting, there's a uh, hair tissue mineral analysis expert named Rick Malter, who believes that he thinks that divorce courts are loaded with people whose relationships were destroyed by copper toxicity. So because this is so common these days, and because of how copper affects our emotions and thought processes and behaviors, then as he says, it leads to a lot of animosity and anger and resentment that ultimately winds up destroying the relationship. So that's a really interesting perspective about copper and how it affects our relationships. Now, copper also contributes to PMS. So copper actually doubles in the week before menstruation. And so then it's gonna raise sodium, which again leads to that irritability, anger, feeling emotional and water retention. Sounds like PMS, right? It also depletes zinc, which affects immune system, leading to sickness and fatigue. 
and it depletes magnesium, which contributes to more anxiety, insomnia, panic, um, and the cramps and achiness that can happen with PMS. And then it also raises adrenaline, which is going to lead to even more anxiety, and it lowers dopamine and serotonin, which is going to result in more sadness and depression. So that is how it contributes to what we call PMS. Now, I do not recommend any kind of aggressive detox of copper. So if I find this in my clients, I'm not forcing it out because that could cause what's called a copper dump, which is gonna make all those symptoms of copper toxicity even more intense. So that's even more anxiety, panic, exhaustion, insomnia, constipation, irritability, all the things we don't want. So instead I work on supporting the primary minerals which are calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and getting those back in balance so that the body becomes strong enough to start getting, getting rid of copper on its own. And in the meantime, while that's happening, I recommend what's called a binder, which will bind to that copper and move it from the body so it doesn't circulate around and end up in the brain and the liver. And then down the road, as as we get the minerals back in balance, I might recommend certain supplements to help with copper detox and to kind of nudge that copper out. But it's really important if you're dealing with copper toxicity to make sure that you are sweating, peeing, and pooping regularly. So you really want to stay hydrated, you want to avoid being constipated, and going to a, to a sauna three days a week to sweat can really help as well. Now, if you are copper toxic, you also want to avoid strenuous exercise that can cause that copper dump. So you really want to focus on relaxing activities, getting emotional support, lowering stress as much as possible. And you want to avoid high copper foods. So those are going to be things like oysters, calamari, shiitake and white button mushrooms, tempeh, sesame seeds, soybeans, cashews, tahini, and unfortunately dark chocolate is high in copper too. And just so you know, it can take six months, up to three years to get excess copper out of the body. But luckily my clients start feeling better long before then. So if you think you are copper toxic and it's affecting your sleep, I can help. Book a call with me to find out how it can help you find everything that's causing your insomnia and correct it naturally so you can sleep better soon. All right, I will talk to you next week.